Hey Shooby Doodlers, how are you doing? I have got another folder of ancient artwork to show you. This is from a book I did back in 1987 or something called Lamb Drove a Gym. I'm going to show you all the artwork that's inside this, but let's not talk about it. <laughs> let's do it. Here's the folder and let's take a look inside. Well, first of all, I have these, um, just a few kind of watercolors I did at the time. I showed you them last week uh, when I was uh, showing you this Victoria, the Wednesday market bus. Click up here if you want to see that video. Um, I'll come back to these because they're actually more relevant uh, to, with this book. So there's something a bit weird going on. I, I made, I used to, there's something weird going on here. Now I used to make these books. I learned a skill from books I borrowed from the library. And then uh, when I got to uh, art college, they actually had a department there which sort of taught this, but they didn't really like us coming over from the art department for some reason. But I used to make these books to sort of show publishers how I thought it was gonna look. Something went wrong there, it's a bit high. Uh, so this is version two, and this is version one. And it says 1983. Well, in 1983, I hadn't moved to the <laughs> panel, and I certainly hadn't started writing these stories. And I think uh, that should be like 86, 87. I must have been having a bit of a, a dyslexic moment or something, I think, there. Uh, I've never been very good at dates. So these uh, books are to kind of show what it's going to look like. Uh, I used to print these out on my uh, Amstrad CPC 464 with a dot matrix printer. Oops, these bits have um, fallen out. And this is really tricky. So the, uh, this artwork and the artwork for Victoria, the Wednesday market bus are going to go to the Museum of Modern Art in Wales in Machantlith, which is um, very close, the town closest to the panel where this book is sort of based in so it's kind of like it's going home so it's going to be really good um where they're going to have conservators <laughs> they'll go have a look at this uh, uh, book they'll open it up and go oh mm, that obviously went there now do we stick that in or do we not <laughs> i'll leave that to them to worry about so uh, if ever you go to the museum of modern art in theory i suppose you'd be able to arrange an appointment to come and see this artwork in person um, and so that was, yeah, that's the second version. And then, so this is obviously the final version I did. And this has got the text from the publishers, uh, which I've sort of stuck in there. These are photocopies. And there's this bit here, client Blackie and some blah, blah. So I think this would have gone to the Bologna Children's Book Fair uh, in the hope of selling international uh, translation rights. And, uh, and this is the paperback. So when the hardback came out, in those days, everything used to come out. Hardback used to come out first. Um, libraries and schools and things would buy the hardbacks because they last longer. And then a year later or something, if you were lucky, uh, you might sell the paperback rights and the book would come out in paperback. And so it did. came out in picture puffins. And uh, I noticed here also, got a letter here from Blackie and Sons from Philippa Mill Smith, who was my um, editor. And it was she who really got me going at, at being a writer. I'd done some artwork for her and she kept saying to me, you know, you're, you're a storyteller. You should have a go at writing. And she said that she had commissioned these uh, town and country stories. She commissioned two town and country stories already and she wanted two country stories. She thought I could do that. She said, go home <laughs> to the west of Wales where you live and uh, write some country stories. And I was thought, oh my goodness, how am I going to do this? On the train home, uh, I saw, uh, the, I think the train actually stopped and I looked out and in a field, there was a field of sheep and her farmer rounding them all up with a sheepdog and in the field was a Land Rover, you know, a farmer's car, vehicle. And, and I just thought, Land Rover, Lamb Rover. And, and the whole thing sort of popped into my head because uh, sort of a year before in the village, there'd been a, a long hot summer, all the rivers had dried up, all the sheep had jumped into the river, come down into the village and <laughs> caused mayhem. <laughs> so that's how the whole thing sort of started. Um, this, is, uh, this is for the printers to give a sort of a feeling of what's going on and telling them 4M spaces and this and that and whatever. This is the title page. And you can see here that when it gets printed, it's a little bit smaller. 
In fact, it's 83% smaller, it says so there. Um, and that, that should be 90 millimeters. Uh, and uh, and in those days, I used to do all my artwork um, a quarter up, as we used to say. So I used to make the artwork slightly larger and it kind of does something when it prints, it tightens up the artwork when you print it um, slightly smaller. I stopped doing that for some reason. It's it just got too complicated working it out. Uh, this is the view from the back of my mum's house. This is my mum's house here. And so th these are kind of watercolours I did at the time. I showed you the last, last time when I did the Victoria book. And, uh, and then from the back of the house, looking up into the mountains, um, there is a Tudor farm. And that's kind of a little watercolour I sort of drew while I was practising and thinking about. And these are little scenes up in the woods up there. There's a tree. That's a place called Place Talgarth, which is um, kind of a holiday place up the road. And oh, that's another sort of <laughs> scene from the woods uh, and up above here. So uh, so it's, it doesn't look exactly like that. I've sort of invented this farm, but that's basically what it's based on. And at the end, I, I remember that there's this one uh, page which doesn't make it into the book. I changed my mind. Uh, and this is the bench that you would sit on to look out at the farm. And this is my mum's sitting room window and it's all uh, tile hung around the back. Um, and uh, I, I changed my mind about that because I thought I could make it a bit more of a dynamic <laughs> picture with other people in, I think. So this is uh, Jim rounding up the sheep with the farmer. This is a lamb escaping. <laughs> this is Jim rounding them all up again. The farmer getting them back into the field. The farmer says, I'm off to market. <laughs> You're in charge. <laughs> and of course, it's a hot lazy day jim goes to sleep and dreams about being the champion sheepdog and when he wakes up all the sheep have gone uh, so he has to leaps into the uh, into the riverbed goes down to the village to see what's happening oh my goodness he's thinking they've all gone down to the village here's my mum's house again i i saw it and in in the uh, dummy books i originally i had uh, the post office involved um but it got too complicated in my mind and this is where the post office is. In fact, if you look here, so the, <laughs> this is the tree at the front. This is it before I chop the top off. <laughs> and um, and this is the road that comes up onto the bridge with the school on the other side, in fact. And the post office is just there on the other side. Um, and so you have should have the school here. My little studio was just there on the other side of the river. That's where I was working and painting these. Um, and this bridge is, is is quite a hump bridge. And uh, I remember one time there was an almighty scraping sound and it came out and there was a, an articulated lorry. Kind of, ee, 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 ee. It was sort of balancing on the top of the bridge. It got stuck there for hours and hours until they managed to drag it out. So the, the, um, the sheep have got into the, the pub. They're drinking people's lemonade. Oh no, Jim's got to sort them out. This is a very sad picture for me, actually. This is Brian, who was the um, barman at the time. And then this is Edwina and Martin. And Martin was the son of Colin who owned the pub. Oh, it's just a terrible story. So, so they were married and they were running a little caravan park just around the back there. And, and Martin went over to do a favor one day to fix up some cables or something, had a, a metal ladder and he touched the power cables overhead and and he was killed instantly. It's so sad, leaving two little girls behind who are now all grown up. But um, it was such a sad state of affairs. And across the road, so this was, <laughs> well, this is my bedroom. And when I first moved, I used to work up there and then in the little shed round the back. And, and I would look out. It's not quite a square, but this is kind of where everything happened in the village down here. So I watched everything going on. And across the road was Orty's shop, although in the book, this is actually Thomas, Mr. Thomas, V. Thomas. And um, and so I could sort of watch the whole world going by and going shopping and <laughs> being very nosy. <laughs> um, so so it wasn't, so this isn't Mr. And Mr. Orty, then they had this fantastic, Mr. and Mrs. Orty had this fantastic shop, which had everything you could possibly want inside. 
Um, they didn't have meat. They didn't have fresh meat and things like that. But the but once a week the butcher's van would come, um, and and so I think the bakers came once. A week. I can't remember. And here you can see that I chopped the top of this tree. So this tree was going a bit out, getting a bit out of control. Uh, so I I got inside it and sort of made it hollow inside and made a little platform so that I could stand on it. My head would stick just above the top and I could just snip all the way around and get it sort of sort tidy. And it was all tied up with wires on the outside to keep it all neat. Um, and again, that's that was my bedroom up there. And here he is rounding up all the sheep uh, and the vegetables. And there's something about this that uh, doesn't quite feel right. I put all these trees in there. It makes it look a bit like Berkshire or Surrey. There's too many uh, trees in the village and it's a bit too green trees. Uh, but anyway, so, and these are the little bungalows across the road from my mum as well. And with the help of Rags, who lives in the shop, uh, Jim sorts out all the sheep, gets them going back up the river and everybody's calling out, yay, well done. They're all watching and well done. Hooray for Lamb Drover, Jim. And um, so the farmer then enters him into the sheepdog trials as Lamb Drover Jim. And this is it's wonderful the way these things work, isn't it? So this field was right across the river from my studio. And eventually this field uh, became, they used to have sheepdog trials in there, but it became where they held the national sheepdog trials one year. So, uh, so it's all history, <laughs> not even repeating itself, history, whatever, yeah, coming true. Then this is uh, what became also the cover and, uh, and it's also page 21. So he, of course he wins. Again, you can see that the cover, it's slightly smaller and it just makes it slightly tighter. And he wins one, two, three, four, five years running and gets given a special cup and he can retire and sit in front of the, the nice warm cooker. And this was my mum's cooker when she moved into the house and it was still a coal-fired cooker. It was on its last legs. <laughs> and this is the end paper. And, and I done, did various other kind of wanting to do, I kept wanting to put the C in there because it's not far from the C panel. It's, it, it didn't make it right, and of course I hadn't quite worked out how to draw Jim in those days. I, there's a thing that they say in books, it's, you know, kill your darlings, and I had this thing about having the sea in there, and pfft, gotta get rid of that idea. And these are some others that didn't make it, these little lambs, and I don't know, I think I've got into a mess with all the uh, silver on there, I think. And then here's Mr. Thomason. Uh, I didn't like that. I think oh, I think Alty's shop actually did have a a cover coming out like that. Um, and then the name above, and there wasn't quite room, so I had to kind of adapt the whole thing. And there we go. And as I say, this and the artwork for um, Victoria at the Wednesday Market Bus are now. <laughs> How I made this video, I can wrap these all up and send them off to the Museum of Modern Art in Wales, uh, where this artwork will make some sense because it's kind of all about the area <laughs> where the museum is, and uh, people will be. So, when I have put all these bits in here and have put in copies of the book and the dummies <laughs> then I can close it all up and pack it up along with Victoria the Wednesday market bus and the dummies that fit with that too and send them off to the Museum of Modern Art in Wales. There you go I hope you enjoyed looking back in history Thanks for watching and make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rainer Drawing Channel and keep coming back for lots more drawing videos every week. In the meantime, keep drawing, 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 practice, 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 and I'll see you next time. Sorry, you take. I'm not sure. Thank you, Alexa. In the meantime, keep drawing, 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 practice, 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 and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.